make this record hot. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having an unbelievable day. I am actually going to uh, tackle a topic that is highly controversial uh, and I'm more than likely going to tick a lot of people off, but I've been asked uh, to weigh in on the topic based on uh, the unfolding of a number of new laws that have hit the table, especially here in Texas, and I'm going to do it. Uh, you know, I don't shy away from controversy. Um, I try to be balanced and fair. Now, with that being said, uh, for those of you, I want, uh, before I get started, before, for those of you who have already uh, sponsored a space in my 25th book, the book I'm writing right now, uh, I want to say thank you guys. Some of the contributions that I have been reading have been inspiring, uh, heartwarming. Uh, like I said, even one person who sponsored space actually paid tribute to me. Uh, that definitely uh, touched me, and thank you. Um, but uh, for those of you who haven't sponsored and want to sponsor, go to the description box of this video and click the link, and it will tell you everything you need to know about sponsoring space in the book. But ultimately, what you're doing is sponsoring space that you can pay tribute to someone who has made a difference in your life and uh, or you can pay tribute to yourself for co accomplishing something that uh, you believe to be exceptional uh, what you put in the book is up to you uh, but I just wanted uh, to uh, off make this uh, present this opportunity and if you want to know more click the box and go check it out or if you just want to do a sponsorship uh, you can go to the direct link and do your sponsorship. There's no minimum. Now you'll you can look in the box and see what you can do. You know what happens. You know with, with when you do uh, larger amounts. But uh, I'm not interested in the amount. I'm in interested in the partic participation. So with that being said, check it out if you want to participate. The more the merrier. I'm not limiting it. Whoever sponsors will be in the book. Okay. Here we go. Let's talk about a very controversial topic. Yeah. Uh, everybody is weighing in on uh, the topic of abortion. Uh, you have the pro-lifers and the pro, pro-choicers, and it's getting mad crazy. Uh, I took a picture, and I'm going to use it as a thumbnail just to show you how crazy it's gotten. And before I sort of go into an elaboration. I'm going to read a statement that I wrote uh, that pretty much highlights my position on it, and it'll make sure that I touch all the points that I feel are pertinent in my initial position on this thing. And then I'll sort of kind of get into it because I can, as you know, be long-winded, and I can get pulled off on things that I'm passionate about and maybe miss some things. So I'm just going to read this, so bear with me. It says, okay, Here's the problem I have with this meme as it is being presented as the focal argument being used to combat these laws that have been put on the table, which I personally disagree with for my own reasons. Out of the 3,605,201 uh, pregnancies each year, 32,101 are the result of, work, of, of rape. The fact that 32,100 pregnancies result from rape is another issue we should be addressing, and while that number is horrible, it represents less than 1% of, pre of all pregnancies. Out of that 32,100 pregnancies, only half will seek an abortion, meaning that women and girls seeking an abortion due to unwanted pregnancies that result from rape is 16,051. Approximately 850,000 abortions are performed each year, of which only 16,051 are due to unwanted pregnancies due to rape. 
That is 1.8% of abortions are rape related. That leaves 98.2% of the abortions accounted unaccounted for, but riding on the coattail of the 1.8% of pregnancies that unwanted pregnancies that seek, seek an abortion. The truth is that there are many other legitimate reasons, like potential birth defects, like a, uh, the uh, the life of being the life of the mother being threatened, financial burdens, and more. Let's also be honest and say that some simply don't want the baby. I disagree with that reasoning, but I'm not. It's not my body. My point on this side of the argument is when you radicalize your message for effect, you will lose credibility with a certain percentage of the population that sees it as gaslighting and grandstanding. On the other side of the argument, I think that pro, the pro-life argument is also full of crap. Not that I am not for giving as many unborn lives a chance as possible. I am for that. My problem is with the side of the equation. Uh, my, my problem with this side of the equation uh, the same is that the same ones claiming to be pro-life have no solutions for poverty and homelessness and that many of these babies will be born that poverty and homelessness that many of these babies will be born into. If you have the answers to the insufficient health care uh, that many inherit and uh, as unwanted financial burdens and reminders of trauma in some instances, no one has solutions for how we account for the millions of mothers who are mentally, emotionally, and financially unprepared to care for a child for a minimum of 18 years. They just want the child to get here, to hell with how the child will live and who will ultimately foot the bill. I'm not a fan of abortion as a means of convenience, but I am not God. I definitely believe no woman or girl should be forced to bear the seed of their rapist. In instances in which birth birthing a child could mean the mother's death i believe the father and mother should have the right to make that decision together as difficult as it may be that in in jest is my stance on it now all of this came from the the constant flux influx of memes showing uh people pregnant and stating that the pregnancy uh, is an unwanted pregnancy due to rape when the truth of the matter, the vast majority of those pregnancies of, are, of girls are women who are literally taking pictures of their pregnancy and they're being used. Um, and using it as the primary argument. And it's for shock value. It's for, to hit home, it's to play on the emotions of the masses. It's to arouse. I have a problem with that because it damages credibility to the true nature of what's at core. What's at core is much more deeper than this. What's at core is does the country or government have a constitutional right to weigh in on it? Now, if you are, and it, and it all boils down to at what point does life begin? I'm not here to make that argument. Uh, I have my belief, uh, and but if we are saying that abortion can't be legal, then the only illegal thing that could be uh, possible, the only way that ab abortion could be uh, possible is if you are counting it as taking a human life. Now, if you're counting it as taking a human life, now the charge has to be murder. The charge has to be voluntary manslaughter or something like that. Uh, if that's what you're trying to say that the government has a right to weigh in on, uh, you, you don't legalize or criminalize morality. While you want a moral standard, you don't legalize or criminalize it. Uh, ethics and morality is something that's governed by uh, the social norm and those within society. The government is there to determine what is absolutely illegal and what is not. Now, if it's illegal, the only illegal element or component that I see of it being that it's the woman's body is that there is, quote unquote, depending on what side of the argument you're on, uh, the taking of a life or not. That's not why I'm here to talk. What I'm here to talk about is 
the fact that you use something that represents such a small percentage of all abortions every year as the primary argument to why it shouldn't be an it, it shouldn't be illegal. I'm not here to say that it should. I, I've stated before that I am not a fan of abortion as a means of convenience, but I'm also not a fan of birthing kids into unwanted environments where oh. there's no plan in place to take care of those kids. I'm not for uh, sitting in, in, in sitting up and pushing people who are ultimately telling you uh, that they don't want a child and forcing them to have one. Uh, not all children end up adopted. Many end up in a foster care system that is forming them out to human trafficking and sex trafficking. Uh, this is something that I've done work in. One of the biggest suppliers of children to sex, tra sex trafficking and human trafficking is the foster care system. Uh, amazing, but it is. How many kids actually get lost in that system? Uh, poverty, homelessness, um, lack of proper medical attention, uh, substantial med uh, medical attention. All of these are issues that if you're going to say you're pro-life has to be on your agenda as well. Pro-life doesn't stop at getting the child through the birthing. Pro-life is saying that I'm going to also have an environment for, for you through for which you can actually live and prosper. Birthing someone into suffering isn't pro-life. It's just a way to grandstand on something you believe or say you believe to stand on top of judge or look down on someone else and to present yourself as someone having a higher moral standard, a higher moral count. Moral character. Um, my thing is, while I may not agree, with uh, the high number of abortions and some of the reasons behind abortions, uh, I shy away from trying to tell a woman what to do with their body. But as a man who has lost a seed to someone who took it upon themselves to do it, I have you know a feeling about that. Um, I also have a feeling about the fact that a woman can decide that she doesn't want that financial responsibility and just eliminate it. A man doesn't have that option. Um, and there's no easy way to resolve that. There's no easy way to resolve that. That literally, again, is pro-life that looks at the life of the child. So because if you sit up and you say, well, if a woman has the right to sit up and say she doesn't want the financial burden, she can simply get, you know eliminate it, but the man doesn't have that right, then the man should have the right at birth to sit up and say, I said I didn't want this pregnancy, you went along with it, and be able to be alleviated, but then you leave a child in a situation where they don't have a, pa a father. You leave a child in a situation where the father isn't present. Uh, there's no easy answer for that, but those are some of the messy things that we have gotten ourselves into society. Uh, at the at the ultimate core of my argument was simply this. Stop with the gaslighting. If you have a real argument, if you have something substantive to stand on, stand on it. Even if it's, I have a right not to want a baby and I don't want it. If that's your argument, stand on that. But don't use an argument about all of these pregnant women who were raped when the truth of the matter is they represent an immensely small part of the population and I absolutely hold the position that if you were raped you you shouldn't have to bear the seed birth the seed of your rapist and literally you know whether you give it up for adoption or you keep it that you know is something that I don't think you force upon anybody that has already been traumatized so that's number one and then um, to force someone you, you got to think about the depth of this to force someone to have a child that may require lifelong care that will never be able to care for themselves and what that looks like 
having actually worked with families on a regular basis with children uh, who are born uh, with a number of different defects that make them incapable of caring for themselves, that's a burden. Uh, I can't speak to how I was. I don't see me backing off of anything. I'm just, that's just not me. But to think that you can push that on, because see, because I'm built a certain way, if that lands in my lap, I'm going to go into it and I'm going to be the best parent I can be. But what you have to realize is every parent isn't me. So if I push that on them and they can't bear the burden of it the way that I'm willing to bear the burden of it, I actually do the child a disservice anyway. Because now I bring the child into a world of suffering, anger, hatred, a feeling of being unwanted, and a bunch of other things. There's no easy conversation here. You know, it's easy to stand on your soapbox and talk absolutes without truly giving consideration to the child. See, when most people are having these conversations, nobody's actually considering the child. They're considering how I feel, what I think. My thing is, what are we birthing the child into? Until we deal with that dilemma, this is still always going to be a hotbed. If there were all these systems in place and we came up with, okay, at a certain state, this particular uh, it being is now considered alive, I could live with it. I could live with it, but the thing is, again, at something of that magnitude. Now, a woman can literally get sick and die from having an abortion. So let's not get that wrong. But I don't think we understand the severity of giving childbirth, going through childbirth, uh, just how close a woman comes to death. And then if you talk about black women, it's, it's even worse. So to force someone to go through it, You've got to have a real strong foundation on why and what's going to happen afterwards because it doesn't stop in the delivery room. This is one of those things that nobody wants to talk about because any way you lean on the answer, you're going to have a bunch of people who don't like you. Fortunately, I don't really care about whether people like me or not. What I'm looking for is proper balance. What I'm looking for is honesty. What I'm looking for is all of the emotional triggering that's going on to end and sit down and say, okay, how do we deal it? How, how do we deal with this? How do we confront this? And being that I can never give birth, there's only so far I can go off into the conversation because I'm never going to be in a situation where I either am forced to have a kid or have the freedom not to. That's never been a case for me. So it's only f so far I can go into that conversation anyway. I can sp speak my opinion, but you will always hear me say it's not my body. I'm not, I'm not going to have to live with it on that level. Now, if you're having my kid, I'm going to have to live with that. And if I lay down with you, regardless of the circumstances of which I lay down with you, in, in the carelessness of not protecting myself and protecting you, and we end up with a kid, then I end up with a responsibility. It's that simple. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. I covered what I think I needed to cover. Uh, hopefully, I don't have to talk about it no more. Um, but that is my stance on it. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. i uh, got a lot to do. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't sponsored a space in the book uh, to commemorate or memorize, memorialize or pay tribute to someone who has had an impact on your life, click the link in the uh, uh, description box, and you can sponsor space in my upcoming 25th book. Man, 25. Can you imagine? Uh, I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful uh, for you that, that have bought my books over the years, for you who have listened to my uh, many videos, to you who have actually came out and heard me speak live uh, at lectures, for you who are clients or past clients. Thanks for all the love and the uh, continued support. Uh, let's make this book the best one. Let's make it the best one. On that note, 
I'm out of here.